All right, so we got the charger on the train and I got it running this morning. Ran nice. Should be all ready for Britt when she leaves to go get it looked at later today. It started up no problem. If you uh, if you missed the last few videos, uh, we've been having problems with the battery on the train and Britt's taking it in today on her day off to get it all fixed and looked at. It might be the block heater as well. So we're gonna get everything checked out on the whole on the whole vehicle. But I didn't have any problems getting it started today. And I had it on a trickle charge all night and that seemed to do the trick. So I let it run for a little bit there and then put it back on the trickle charge and should be no problem for Britt to get it going later. It's pretty cold, it's about minus 27 Celsius when I woke up today. So it's still a little cold for these engines to start up if you don't got a good battery and block heater. I'm glad we're getting that fixed right away though. That's one less thing to worry about in the cold. I should have done that in fall. Had I known that it was gonna be an issue, I definitely would have, but I thought it was still good. Nope, winter has proven that to be false. Could I have a large coffee with one cream and a shot of espresso in it, please? For sure, anything else? That's it. Super duper. Timmy's! One of you asked in my comment section uh, two days ago uh, what my budget is for Tim Hortons in a month. <laughs> Some of you have asked me, or one of you asked me at least, what my budget is for Tim Hortons in a month. <laughs> You'd probably be surprised. It's less than 50 bucks the whole month. Uh, the coffee, the way I get it, even with my espresso shot, is only about three bucks, which is too expensive in my opinion, but whatever, whatever. Three bucks, and I don't get one every day. And uh, it's usually just in the mornings, so let's say three days a week. So that would be, three times three is nine, so let's say 10 bucks a week, 40 bucks a month, plus the extra odd one here, then yeah, about 50 bucks a month. I mean, I don't spend a fortune on it. It might seem like it, because I talk about it in my videos a lot. Because <laughs> it's a treat every time I go there. Now, usually we make coffee at home in our, we have a Tim Hortons coffee maker there. My coffee's pretty good. But we use Maxwell House coffee too, so it's not exactly Timmy's coffee. I don't know, we're weird. Look at this, the sun is almost above the horizon this week on the way to work, almost. Makes me feel like I'm late. A couple of weeks and we'll be driving to work in the sunlight, in the direct sunlight. And then daylight savings time will come and mess everything up again. delivery. Now I 
got to head into Winnipeg here. Like I said, I'm just on the northeast side. Got to head into Winnipeg, fill up the trailer. See what we can find ourselves to do. I'm gonna head into my spot right now on Route 90 and call in at that point. See where they'd like me to go. See if my spot is open here. This is where I come to wait for direction when there's none given to me yet. It's the northwest side of the city. This is where a lot of uh, industrial, commercial buildings and activities are. So most of the things I pick up will be in this corner of the city, or a lot of them anyways. So when I got nothing to do, this is a nice place to come and wait because I'm pretty much close by anything they're going to throw at me within a couple of minutes. And nobody's here. Nice. Right along here, this is where I like to sit. Right by all the buses. Facing this way so that I'm not looking directly at the sun. Nice. Nice. A Denali yet too, isn't it? A Denali Duramax, brand new. So they're just devising a plan right now. And I gotta sit here for a few minutes, so. Shouldn't be too long. They'll let me know what I need to do. I got 28 feet of trailer. I mean, it's a single axle pup, so it's not a very big trailer. I can fit about 12 skids in there. Uh, full size skids, I believe. Maybe 14. I've never actually checked, but it depends how big the skids are. Every skid I pick up seems to be a different size. Like the standard skid's like four by four uh, like feet. And then uh, some skids that I pick up are like one by threes. And there's two by twos and three by threes. It's sort of like whatever they uh, whatever they find to put the stuff on, that's, that's what I get. Whatever, we'll fill it all up and uh, bring it to where it needs to be. We got some action. Three skids sent to us by the load gods. Gotta go pick them up a little south of here. So they just put uh, three pallets on me. I'm just gonna check in here to make sure that everything is as it should be in it and that they returned my pallet jack. It's happened before recently that they didn't. Not this same place. Yeah. Oh, it's still so heavy. There, my brooms are there, my ladders there, my straps are here. This door really needs some work. <laughs> I am building the muscles, opening it up again and again. She's dirty again. Dirty. All right, okay, so. That's that, let's let them know that we're ready for more. So this is the portal to the load gods. They're at the other end of this thing, somewhere out there. All I do is it works just like a CB radio, except it's a two-way radio, so it's only the people on here that you actually want to talk to and need to talk to, which is very nice, because on the CB, it's just a bunch of people yelling at each other. Two-way radio, it's actually just business and uh, you get things done real quick. It's easy to communicate with them right away. So I'll let them know that I'm loaded. Uh, they'll confirm and then they'll give me my next direction and then I write my directions on my little notepad here. I write uh, where I'm picking up, what I'm supposed to be picking up or how many skids or whatever and then I write where it's going to and then I head off in that direction. And then at the end of the day when I deliver it, I cross it out off my page here so I know what's still on my trailer and what has been delivered already just by quickly taking a glance at my notes here. So we just gotta wait for them to figure something out there and they'll send me off in the direction I need to go. I only got three skids on me so I can, I got like a whole trailer yet. So we'll just uh Wait a sec for them to get back to us. They got a lot going on on their end. 
All right, they have answered our prayers and our calls, and they have given us work to do. They are so kind. We gotta head to the south side of the city. I'm on North Route 90 right now. I gotta go to South Route 90, so just straight south. Somebody there needs me to pick something up. I'm just the man for the job. Turns out, I've got a truck and trailer. I'll pick it up for you. Let's get ourselves onto King Edward Street here. Also known as Route 90. And Route 90 has many different names as it goes through the city. So it's probably about I don't know, I'm gonna say 15 minutes. It'd take me about 15, maybe 20 minutes to get there. I doubt it would take 20, but. It doesn't look like traffic is too bad today. And look at this, this road is empty. This is one of the busier roads in Winnipeg. So maybe if this is a sign, we'll get down there in 10 minutes. guy. Big load of pallets. One strap on that back stack. One strap. <laughs> wow. And one on the front. I wouldn't trust that. But hey, if he feels it's good enough, that's his load. That's his load. I always went crazy when I was uh, on flatbeds. I would always overstrap it. If people would recommend me to put two straps on a, on a piece of freight, I'd find a way to put three or four. Just for peace of mind, you never want to lose anything off those flatbeds. It's a lot of paperwork, big mess, never ends well. Especially on these bumpy Winnipeg roads, you don't want your freight flying all over the place. Usually when you're on flatbed, you want at least two straps on your first stack of freight and your last stack of freight just to prevent it from twisting or moving in any type of way that would loosen the strap, right? And allow it to fall off the back into traffic. Okay, bud, I think you could have made that, but safer is better, I guess. Good for you, good for you. Now, across the street to the left, you see that big pile of snow or that big cube of snow and ice? That's gonna turn into one of the famous Winnipeg snow sculptures. They put them all over the city. It's really neat every year. In February, there's the Festival de Voyageur. That's a festival in our French quarter of the city. And it celebrates the first voyageurs that came up the rivers here and settled. Uh, they were French. So I had to quickly dip out of Winnipeg for one call. We got five skids to pick up that needs to go back to Winnipeg to St. Boniface. So we're just southeast of the city here right now, around the Lorette area. And uh, they got five skids for me that have to go direct straight back to the city. We have to get them there before they close. The time is now 10 after two. I think we should have lots of time. It's probably about 20 minutes back to where I need to be. I guess it depends when their receiving shuts down, eh? Some people like to shut their receiving down at 1.30 for no reason. But hey, whatever, whatever you wanna do. Let's see, where are we going here? Where are we going into St. Boniface? St. Boniface, here it is. Let's see. Yeah, about 25 minutes from here. So let's say I'm waiting for another guy here to get loaded. They'll probably get to me in about 20 minutes, and it's 20 minutes, about an hour, I guess I'd be there quarter after three yeah I guess I guess I see what their dilemma is they were talking to me like they wanted to make sure that this would get there and I said oh it shouldn't be a problem I mean unless if you close your receiving down at 3 30 we should be there no problem I'm, I'm guessing we should get get back to St. Boniface in Winnipeg 3 15 it's my best guess let's see how close I was first we got to get loaded here five big skids Five big ones. Is 
He's got a 53 foot trailer beside me here to load first though. This guy's got room for one, two, three, four, five, six placards on the side of his trailer. Six. How many dangerous goods are you haul in that thing, man? You need six placards on your load, man? That's, that's crazy. Why don't you just like put a big sign across the whole side of it? Dangerous. Stay away. The placards that you see on the side of some trucks and some trailers, uh, there's those little diamond shaped placards, right? It tells people in the event of an accident, let's say like the pile up in Fort Worth not too long ago, uh, when you get to an accident scene and you see a truck with certain placards on the side, it'll tell the people there responding to the accident what is inside the trailer that's dangerous. Is it flammable? Is it corrosive? Uh, is it a dangerous gas? Is it a dangerous liquid? They need to know what's in the trailer before they open it up. And if it's exceptionally dangerous, they know to get all people away from that truck as quickly as possible, right? And they know what kind of team they need to call in for a cleanup if it's spilt everywhere. Dangerous goods could be anything from, you know, like gasoline to diesel fuel to, uh, sulfuric acid to uh, uh, whiskey <laughs> alcohol uh, anything flammable anything corrosive, anything that could be of a harm to you would be considered a dangerous good and you need a special certificate just to be able to haul that load you got to go through a special training course that took entirely a lot longer than I thought it would but there were some issues, uh, they couldn't get the paperwork printed off, something wrong with the computers they weren't printing, so that took up probably an extra 20 minutes there. So the time is now 3 o'clock. And now I'm thinking I'm probably going to, uh, probably going to end up getting there at 3.30 now. Not too sure when they close, but we're going to give her nonetheless. Hopefully not hit any delays. Okay. According to Google, we're on schedule. Should be arriving at 327. But that's on this highway. We gotta go through some city first. Still on schedule. Look at this guy with his big wide tires. Again, wouldn't the whole side of your truck be full of scratches from rocks? Then again, we're in the city, and city boys don't really take their trucks off the pavement that often, so I guess they don't have to worry about that. I never thought of it that way. I was like, you have a four-wheel drive, you have a truck, why are you going to leave it on the pavement? It's not what it's made for. <laughs> nice truck, though, nonetheless. I just wouldn't do the wide tires like that, I don't know, it's not my style. If I can get across this road here, we're, we're turning onto Dawson Road off La Gemodier. Gotta go a little ways into the St. Boniface uh, industrial zone here to drop these skids off. They are a bunch of hot skids. It's a hot freight. It needs to be delivered right now. Probably because they close 
Well, I got here, what, 327? They only got me in the dock at 4 o'clock. And I'm pretty sure that they close around 4 to 4.30. So they were obviously in a big hurry getting me unloaded. This thing was just all over the place there. Nothing looks broken. Everything looks good. So that's why I like to be on the dock. Because usually if anybody's in a bit of a rush or if they just don't care about other people's property, they're usually a little bit nicer on the equipment if you're standing in there watching, in my experience. But... Uh, it's all right. No harm, no foul. Just a little bit of a <laughs> bumpy ride in the cab. All right, let's see what's next. Let's see what's next. You know what? I should actually call in from right here. You guys know what time it is, right? It's time to see if they've fixed the pumps yet. What is it, February 16th, 2021? My best guess is they're not gonna be fixed until May. Unless if we have a really warm April, but I'm thinking beginning of May, like May, first week of May. But maybe I'm wrong. This is the St. Anne Co-op. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Nope, I still see him on there. Still not fixed. I guess there are higher priorities. Maybe they're going to expand this place and make it bigger. Maybe that's why they're not fixing it. We can only guess and speculate and spread rumors and conspiracies about it. That's all we can do. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. I'm gonna get my super secret fuel card here, which has a super secret password. I'm gonna put it into the little box over there and it's gonna give me some go-go juice so that I'm all set for tomorrow morning. See, I have to park really close here. Oh. because we got to string over this and it's not meant to string over but it reaches if you park close enough it is what it is all right you guys missed the rock star welcome but believe me i once again feel like a rock star that's all you got left diesel <laughs> Don't worry, mom's gonna be home right away as so you can freak out all over again. And you guys will probably pass out from all the energy that you just burnt. Hey. <laughs> I just took him out, so. Oh, that's probably Britt right there. Uh, she is coming back from the city because she was working with the, or getting the terrain all fixed up today, right? And it looks like everything is all fixed. It was a little bit of a, a little bit of a pricey bill, but we were expecting it to be a little bit higher, so we're not gonna complain. Where did the sound come from? I don't know it came from here. Uh huh. Did she say something? Oh, that was dad. 
Dad asked me how was my day. My day was great. Thank you.